Hey guys, welcome back to Time Tenchi. This is DJ Your Gamer Girl signing on. So, last episode, we found out Michelle was the one helping Bunny and Mizuki this whole time, trying to change their future. Trying to change the future. And she asked us to risk a time paradox to test her theories. And. Well, she basically wants us to go back to uh, burn down the house, but we I, but we do apparently have a choice to either burn down the house and everything continues as normal, or essentially save Kenji's parents and time let time change. What the possibility of something being affected? After a few minutes, my door slightly cracked open, Bunny's face popping in. Alright, Romeo, enjoy the company. But don't get too handsy, they're still super huge right now. There was a light smack sound from the other side of the door. Ow! Hey, I was just teasing him. Gosh. Anyways, Kenji, Mizuki will be outside this door and I'll be in front of where the girls are supposed to be as to eliminate any suspicion from Michelle. So, yeah, enjoy your night together. I'll be back around here to pick them up before dawn. And with that, both Rose and Kyo stepped in tentatively. Meek looks on both their faces. Before I could say anything, Rose and Kyo rushed up and took me in an embrace. I could feel them shaking. Rose! Kyo! <laughs> Have fun, you little birds. As the door shut behind us as I lead them both into the room. Rose sat next to me on the bed while Kyo took a chair nearby. I insisted that I sit on the chair myself, but she smiled and waved at me back, saying that she found chairs more comfy. We sat there in silence for a bit before I finally spoke up, wanting to get Mizuki's words on my, off my mind. Rose nodded, as did Kyo, and they thought about it for a little bit. So, we could just cease to exist for you? Or would your memories be altered to forget about us? I don't know. I would hope not, but at the same time. Kenji, think about it. Your parents raised you. They knew you your whole life. Literally. You've known us for a week. Seriously. I don't want to be harsh or anything. I mean, we both care about you a lot, and... And we really don't want things to go that way, but... But if it saves you from the emotional pain of not only losing your family, but killing them yourself... Then please, by all means. That's not the only danger, you guys. I mean, think about it. I could totally ruin time, or or die, or cease to exist, or something like that. There's a lot more than just you two. Those words made both of them flinch, so I tried back paddling a bit. I care about you both a lot. Whether it's been a week or a year, you've both been no nothing but kind to me since we met. You've consoled me and treated me so well since I was dropped into your lab. And I really appreciate that. I do. I just... The emotions swelling within me were conflicting and painful. It felt as if, no matter what, with this decision, I was... Decision. With this decision I was about to make, I was going to lose someone. I could change the future. Or let the pain of the present continue forever. This was the only opportunity Michelle was giving me. The fact that she knew I was the one who burned down my home seemed a bit suspicious to me. But if it was for the sake of whatever timeline she had in mind. I must not have noticed myself shaking because soon Rose's arm was wrapped around my shoulder and Kyo was looking at me worriedly. She stepped away from the chair and sat at the edge of the bed, wrapping her arm around my waist head leaning on my shoulder, comforting me as well. Even when the moment comes, Kenji, we're here for you, okay? Always. Even through whatever time you end up in, we'll be here. I promise you. That's a hard promise to make, Rose. I'll make sure she keeps it. I looked up at Kyo, a melancholic sp smile on her face. I almost said Sprite. I don't know why. I nodded. Okay. Thank you both. Really. I'll do everything I can. 
You have one choice to make, Kenji, and we'll both support it, no matter what. Kyo nodded as it Kyo nodded, as did I. With that, there was a knock on the door. Dawn is almost here. You guys need to head back to your room. Gosh, already? Time is just all over the place today. Ironic, isn't it? I wouldn't say ironic, just... Now's not the time for poorly made jokes. Get on over to your room, both of you. Now. Wait a second, I... I turned my head to face. My shoes! Oh! Oh! Our first choice ever in this entire game. Well, in all honesty, I do like Rose the most. Out of all the out of all the girls, Rose is my girl. I mean, I love Kyo, don't get me wrong, but I just love Rose. Right. Okay, Mizuki. Kenji. Rose turned to me, watching as Kyo left the room. Somehow I could sense that she knew Rose wanted a moment with me. Why are we in the times tunnel? I mean, <sighs> whatever. Rose turned, facing me, her head slightly tilted down. She was blushing. About what happened. Before, back at the lab, and, well... She smiled, lifting my chin with her hand. I smiled, understanding what she meant. It's okay, Rose. I don't need it spelled out for me. I think I got it figured out. With that, she leaned into me, lifting my chin further as we locked lips. I felt my body gasp, but I returned her embrace. We did it with Rose! Well, we didn't do it. Okay, we kissed Rose! Rose is my waifu for the- my Rose is my Taintenchi waifu. We sat there for a bit, which felt like forever for a second, until she pulled away, Mizuki right behind her. What did I tell you? Oh, come on, we didn't do any- Hush. Rose, get back to your quarters, now. Please. With a furious blush on her face, Rose turned to me and smiled, her hand lingering on my leg before slipping away as she stepped out of the room. Mizuki watched her step out, then she turned to me, smirking. She's your favorite, then. I mean, uh... <laughs> Say no more. Choosing between those two is like choosing between two brands of fine wine. Really? You can't go wrong. You're just lucky enough to get some. Am I correct on- <laughs> Burn! I... Uh, yeah, I guess that's one way of putting it. Simply. Complex romantic situations were never my forte. Congrats. Regardless, I wonder what she would have said if I looked at my shoes. <laughs> looked at my shoes. Would she have called me? A, would she have called me dumb too, like Michelle did that, <laughs> that one time? Now then, get some rest. Tomorrow is already here, but it hasn't completely risen yet. Right. Thank you, Mizuki. Of course. With that, she blew out the candle and stepped out of the room. I laid in bed, thoughts still burning in my head, but somehow I still fell into a restless sleep. Well, now he knows. You had to tell him, didn't you? Trust me, I didn't want to. But it wasn't but it was either that or springing on him just before he had to do it. Do you realize that doing so may, al may alter the actual decision? He doesn't know all the details, so I'd say it'll still be fine. And if he pieces it together? Kenji isn't an idiot, Michelle. Even if he hasn't researched it as deeply, I'm sure he can piece together the consequences of altering time. That's a risk I was willing to take at this point. At this time, he deserved some sort of explanation. Whatever you say, Michelle. I just hope this goes how you think it will. Alright, I'll set up the coordinates. You two keep them in line. Really? Do you honestly... Do you think we're honestly going to make some kind of break for it when the time window is the only way to get us back home? You have a point, I suppose? Still, I expect no funny business while I set this up, okay? 
Whatever, Michelle, just get this over with already. The room was incredibly silent, except for Michelle's rapid tapping on the keyboards and screens, entering in all the information required to bring us back to that specific place and time. I was shaking. This decision, it was going to be one of the hardest I had made in my whole life. It shouldn't have been, but this fear of everything falling apart because of this one decision was... Alright, Kenji, it's ready. Now then, Kenji and I are going through this alone. But, no buts. You can keep an eye on our actions using the monitor, but if you go through the time window to an alternate time yet again, you run the risk of overloading your indoctrine systems. And I won't let either of you take that risk. Both Rose and Kyo went silent, looking down at their still giant, gigantic chests abashedly. Okay, let's get going. The white light in the center of the machine grew brighter as the time window opened. Before it had always seemed so welcoming, if not strange, but now it only filled me with dread. Soon, both Michelle and I stepped through, leaving everyone else behind. I took one last look behind me to see the others. Mizuki with a solemn yet knowing glare, Bunny with a wry, hopeful smile. Both Kyo and Rose were fighting back tears, but they waved me off. I felt as if I was going on a funeral march. And it didn't have to be this way. Soon we were within the time window, the world going fuzzy like it had in the other trips. It took a while. Michelle just standing next to me almost guided me, but with a stern look on her face. Eventually the world materialized once more, and I could see again. What I saw was my old neighborhood. My old house. Completely as it was before the accident. But it wasn't an accident. In the world that I was currently in and experiencing, this accident was something that was purposefully caused by my hand. Now, Kenji. Michelle turned to me and bent forward, a serious look upon her face. On the ground next to her was a bottle. Had that always been there? How long has she been planning this project? Regardless of my thoughts, she picked it up. It's a Molotov! I don't want my motives to get in the way of this decision. This, ultimately, is your choice. And either and either way it goes, it will be gratefully helpful towards my, res my research. Your research is messed up, Michelle. Uh, I know how it seems, Kenji. But what I'm doing is beyond who I am and is beyond who you are. Don't give me that! My hand clutched on, on the bottle, feeling its heat as the chemicals inside of it grew hotter from the flame. Don't pretend that you're better than what is happening here, Michelle. Sure, I'm one person, and I'm pretty insignificant when it comes to the future, but if I do this, I'll be a murderer of my own parents, and if I don't, I could possibly be committing suicide. You don't know that. No, I don't, but you don't either, Michelle. We were silent. Standing there, staring at my home, a figure walked out of it in a way. I deduced this figure to be me from one week ago. It was strange to even think about it, seeing myself from a different time. But it wasn't something that I could ruminate on for long. Regardless of your misgivings, Kenji, this is your choice. Make it how you will. Either throw this bottle, or don't. This is the last I will say about it. I stood there for a moment, thinking. Thinking about... How the events of this week, how many horrible things that had happened, and all of the great things that had happened as well. Getting to know Rose and Kyo, even Mizuki and Bunny, it had been such a strange yet wonderful experience. If I threw the bottle on that house, it would all continue. But if I didn't, it could all disappear. Oh my god. Okay, so we could either throw the bottle... And stay, stay with the girls. Or don't throw the bottle and potentially kill ourselves. And, or, or make it so we never knew them at all. Oh. <laughs> the point, oh my god. The point of a paradox is to go back in time and change is something that had happened. So technically, if we don't throw the bottle, there will be a time paradox, which could potentially, as in Steins Gate, 
um, create two separate timelines. One where the house did burn down, and we and we still know Kyo and Rose, and Mizuki and Bunny, and a, and a second timeline where we didn't throw the bottle, and things just went on as... and things just continued on. Oh my god. Oh my god, um... Okay, um, I'm gonna not throw the bottle first. So I think I'm, I'm, I, I, I saved it. I just saved it. So I'm not throwing the bottle. I stood there and thought of Kyo's words, of Mizuki's as well. About time being a river that we travel along, changing whatever was before would only alter what was ahead, right? As confusing as it was, I felt as if, for that brief second, that if I didn't throw the bottle, and I didn't cause the place to burn down, then somehow, some way, everything would work out. I sat the bottle down, looking at Michelle sternly. I'm not doing this, Michelle. Michelle merely smiled, then picked up the bottle, grabbing a pitcher that was next to her, and dropping it in, dousing the flames. I knew I could count on you, Kenji. Now then, when we go through the time window, things will change, so... Uh, Kenji! What's wrong? I just... I feel weird and... Uh, a sharp pain hit my stomach and swirled throughout my body. I hunched over and fell to my knees, growing, going faint. The sweat fell down my brow and my ears rang loudly. Is this really the kind of music to be playing when I'm potentially dying? I could hardly hear Michelle's words as I suddenly blacked out, the world disappearing. With that, Kenji vanished in front of Michelle's eyes. She merely stood there for a moment, mouth agape, then suddenly shook her head, stepping towards the white light that appeared nearby. That wasn't supposed to happen. Michelle was awestruck as she stepped back through the time window, traversing back to the time with Kyo and Rose. She made it back to their lab, sensing the air around here was much more dense than before. Michelle! What's happening? It's a prediction I feared. The time we're currently in is collapsing, so our collective consciousness is also fading. In English, Michelle! We're slipping into a different flow of time's river, where we gain a fragment of our memories. But things will be different. At least I hope that's what's happening. Essentially, time itself is trying to fix the paradox we just created. So this timeline where, we, where all of us exist with our knowledge is falling apart. So what does that mean for us? Michelle smirked as she collapsed over. As she did, the clothes of all the girls slowly started disintegrating first. As they normally did when they were in a time with the, other than their own. We're going home, girls. To a new home, that's the same. But so much different. I promise you, everything's going to be o And with those word words, the world went black. For a moment, reality seemed to be an empty void. Like a comatose host dream that could never be woken from. But eventually, Kenji's eyes flitted open. And the ceiling, uh, seeing the ceiling of his bedroom. His old bedroom. From his old house. What? What happened? Ugh. I feel sick. I leaned over, thinking I might throw up. Holding a trash can in front of my face, I anticipated it, but nothing came. For a while, I just sat there, composing myself as the world stopped spinning. Where was I? Was I home? Was this home? I looked up and down. Yes. Yes, this was my old room in my old house. But it never felt old. It was just the place I lived in. Suddenly, there was a knock on my door. It cracked open, and a sweet voice rang from the other side. Kenji? Are you alright in there? Your grandfather wanted you over at his lab in an hour or so. Mom? Oh, God. 
She's got the stereotypical dead mother hair. No wonder. She actually kind of looks like, um, Trisha Elric from Fullmetal Alchemist. Yes, dear? Are you feeling well? You sounded sick. I sat there, a smile crossing my face as tears began to well up in my eyes. I quickly wiped them away. I I'm fine, Mom. Thank you. So, Grandpa Tenstein wants me over at his lab in an hour, then? Yes, dear. That's what he told me. Are you sure you're feeling alright? I could call him and- No! I, I mean, no. I'm fine, Mom. Can I just- Is Dad home yet? No, dear. He's still working. He has an overtime shift today. He'll be done by 11 o'clock. What time is it now? Around 6 o'clock. I was worried with how much you were sleeping today. Alright, I'll be back home then. I suddenly lunged forward, embracing her and laughing. Goodness, Kenji. What's gotten into you lately? Oh, just nightmares, I guess. Really, Kenji? You're 18. I'm sure you can handle some bad dreams by now. I pulled away from her and dashed downstairs, making my way down through the door. But before I did, I called back up at her. You're right, I can! I'll be back home for dinner! I just gotta get to the lab! I practically did a marathon sprint all the way to the lab, fueled by adrenaline and joy. I made a mad dash to the field where the lab was, which surprisingly wasn't far from where I lived. Had it changed location? Or was it always this close? I couldn't remember, nor did I care. Eventually, I made it to the entrance and pressed the call button. A voice ran out from the box. State your business. Grandpa, it's me! Kenji? There was a silence for a moment before the elevator deemed. The shutter doors swiftly sliding open, beckoning me to come inside. I practically jumped inside, pressing the lowest floor button, hopping up and down in my anticipation to see the lab. Finally, it deemed again, sliding open to reveal Kyo standing at the doorway. Before I could say a word, she tackled me in a hug, laughing and crying at the same time. Oh my god, I'm so glad you're okay! Kenji, we were so worried that something had happened, but at the same time we weren't, and, and it's just been so confusing for so long, but you're finally here! Yeah, I am. We stared at each other for a moment before Kyo pulled forward and kissed me, pulling me back, pulling back and smiling. I was a bit stunned, but smiled. This way! The elders want to see you too, of course! Kyo took me by the hand, practically dragging me towards the lab and pushing the doors open. Inside was the whole crew. Michelle, Rose, and Tensai. The monitor was even on, showing Mizuki and Bunny in their own time period. Wait, everything worked out? So, you made it out alive! Michelle walked over to me, sauntering with a smirk before placing a hand on one of my shoulders with a sigh. Good job, kid. You made me proud. Thank you, Michelle. I'm sorry I doubted you. I don't blame you, Ken. My plan was crazy. But I believe you made the right choice, all things considered. Now then, I already have another plan on the way. Let me just boot up the time window and I'll set it in motion. Seriously, Michelle? Already? Kenji just got here. He's lucky to still have his memories from the past. I mean, even those are a bit fuzzy. The details may fade, but the important things are to are there to stay. You only, you only lost a week, so the damage shouldn't be too severe. It's just nice to see you back, kid. Now then, time window. Kenji doesn't have to join, but I want to see if... Suddenly a spark emitted from the time window. The picture on the screen fuzzed away, losing connection with Bunny and with Mizuki and Bunny. A low hum could be heard. An ominous noise that put me on edge, as well as everybody else in the room, even Michelle. Michelle? What's going on? Before Michelle could answer, the time window burst in a shower of light. Michelle, who was standing closest to the window, screamed as half her body was engulfed by its embrace. But before it could take her away, the power surge ended, the window suddenly closing shut. Michelle, caught in between our time and whatever time the window was set to, suddenly burst into light with the window itself, screaming at the top of her lungs as it did so. Michelle! Oh my gosh, Tensai, do some- Before anyone could do anything, a sonic, a loud sonic boom knocked over, knocked everyone over and knocked me out cold. Ugh, my head. I stood, rubbing the back of my sore head. I looked around, seeing Rosa and Kyo also coming too. Tensai stood next to me, helping me up as I regained my sense of reality. Grandpa, what? Well, 
I'm afraid that with every action in time, there is a reaction. No, you can't mean- I'm afraid I do. Michelle tampered with time. She tried to take control, control of it and use it for her own purposes. Good or evil, it doesn't matter. I warned her about this and she shrugged it off. But time wanted to be sure that she never interfered again. You're talking about time, it's, it's a sentient being and not just a concept, Tensai. Rose slowly stood, blinking harshly, so her eyes could adjust to the light. At this point, my dear, I'm not sure what time is. All I know is that I have tampered with it enough for my age. Michelle knew how to use the time window even better than me, so I'm not sure what will happen now. What about Mizuki and Bunny? What will they do? They will find a way, I promise you. Why don't you seem shocked by all this Tensai? Michelle just died right in front of us! I am very, very saddened by this Rose, despite not having the composure of this attitude. She was one of my best engineers and a close friend, but I warned her of her actions. You're not saying she got what was coming to her, are you, Tensai? That's, that's so cruel! Time is cruel. More reason I could have even imagine. She walked away, heading towards the lab's exit. You may know us, Kenji, but this may very well be the end of our adventures with the time window. No. We all turned to look at Rose, her hands clenched into fists, tears streaming down her face. Michelle would have wanted us to continue. She would want us to use the time window and resume her legacy, despite the consequences and risks. I'm not going to give up on this Tensai, no matter what happens. You've seen the risk firsthand. Yes, and I don't care. Michelle died for this. It wouldn't feel right to just throw it away. Silence fell on the room once more as we stared at her. Since I let out a deep sigh, saying no more. I walked over the rose, hugging her as she wept softly. Kyo walked over as well, embracing the two of us warmly. As we, as we stood there, a light emitted from the time window yet again. But it was different this time. We turned our heads or looked, and were shocked by what we saw. What happened? Well, are you guys ready or what? What? <laughs> we hope you enjoyed Time Tenchi, but... It's not over. Join the girls again for Time Tenchi 2. It's actually out right now on Steam. I would just have to- That's it! That's- Well, that's one of the endings for Time Tenchi, and honestly, I'm happy with that ending. I am! I didn't think I'd finish it! Holy crap! Well, that was- That was quick. It only took- It took me like two weeks to finish that, I think. Where's the three? No, wait, it was three. Because I started Tron Bon um, last week. So, wow. <laughs> we, we beat Time Tenchi. Well, we didn't beat Time Tenchi, we finished it. Um, yeah, I like that ending. There were a bit of mistakes here and there when it came to writing and stuff, but. Uh, nothing more. I like that ending. I think that was Michelle, judging by the way the hair was. Like, Michelle died, but I don't- I think she didn't at the same time. Maybe she became a part of the time window. Like, she's some sort of spectral being within the time- within time itself. Or something complicated as that. I'm- I'll have to see when I get Time Tenchi 2. So, that was time tension. I hope you all enjoyed. Thanks for riding along with me. Um, I'm not entirely sure what visual novel I'll be starting next. But hopefully it'll be a good one. So, until next time, this is the Gamer Girl signing off. Bye bye.